Okay, guys. Uh, we are now in the second segment of week eight of uh, GM1. So let's continue. So from Hong Kong, Japan, next, uh, Dr. Jose Rizal came to the USA still in 1888. Okay. So it must be noted that the steamer were in uh, Dr. Jose Rizal uh, <clears throat> was in, uh, was... Uh, was not permitted um, to, uh, what do you call this, uh, was not permitted to have its uh, passengers disembark. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> that lasted for uh, one week. Okay. They were not allowed to disembark for one week. And uh, in, actually, they were quarantined since uh, their ship came from the Far East. Uh, we're in. Uh, there was an ongoing uh, uh, cholera pandemic. Okay, one week to seven days. Now, um, talking about quarantine, uh, let me share with you the origin of this term. Okay, so essentially, right now we're in a pandemic, and uh, uh, the lockdown that we are experiencing is nothing new. In fact, it is stated in the Bible also. Now. Uh, Way back in uh, 1347-48, uh, there was a pandemic of the bubonic plague or the black plague. Okay, So the term, the English word quarantine actually came from the Italian. Quaranta giorno, which is 40 days. Okay, uh, This was the number of days that ships had to stay in port before their passengers could disembark. And their goods can be unloaded. Okay, so uh, the Italians implemented this uh, as a precautionary measure for uh, uh, to be sure that uh, um, non-residents would not bring in um, diseases into their um, cities. Okay, now going back, so that's forty days. Okay. Um, in our time, in a COVID pandemic, that's 14 days, right? Okay. But uh, in the case of Dr. Roser Rizal, just, just one week, seven days, okay? Now, Dr. Roser Rizal describes uh, America is a very progressive and prosperous country. It is a land of fairness and justice, however, only for the whites. He has seen a lot of racial discrimination during the time. No? There was no uh, racial equality. <clears throat> so essentially, the white men feel that uh, they are superior over the black people or any colored man for that matter, including brown, which are the Filipinos, and yellow, which are the Chinese. Okay. So, um, among the, the rules that time were a colored man cannot marry a white man. Okay. We're using man here as, uh, as in mankind. We're not referring to the gender. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> there was demarcation line. Excuse me. In fact, it's not only the, the blacks, the Native Americans, or even the Chinese were hated during the time, just like in Manila no? uh, or in, in the Philippines at that point in time. Uh, many Chinese were brought to the U.S. to work in uh, during the uh, gold rush in California. Okay, So the Americans hated the Chinese. No? In fact, uh, in the vessel where uh, Dr. Jose Rizal um, uh, was in, the Chinese passengers were allowed to disembark much, much uh, later. They were quarantined longer. Okay. Just a note. Okay. During the gold rush in the U.S., um, it was the time when uh, the Chinese invented the chop suey. Okay. The story goes that uh, the Chinese would were just fed with uh, leftovers. So what they did was to just combine it and presto. 
they had chop suey. If you go to China, there's no chop suey there. The chop suey was uh, invented by the Chinese who were working in the U.S. Okay, so after that, Dr. Jose Rizal uh, went straight ahead to England, also in 1888. No? Uh, when he was there, he went to London, where he was met by Dr. Antonio Maria Rejedor, a lawyer who was exiled there. Please remember that uh, Dr. Jose Rizal was meeting all these uh, people who were exiled by the Spanish government, these Filipinos who were exiled by the Spanish government. So, um, so <clears throat> later he was uh, introduced to Dr. Uh, Renholt Rose, the librarian of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in England. So this is a, we could say that this is a pivotal role. Uh, this is a pivotal point in the life of Rizal because uh, this would open um, windows of opportunity for his mission. Now let's see why he went to England. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> So number one, to do research on Philippine history. So he need the basis. You see, um, records of Philippine history were primarily um, written by uh, Spaniards. Of course, there are many uh, references to the Philippines in uh, Chinese sources. Okay, but uh, uh, but the first hand in uh, documentation was by the Spaniards, okay? So number two, he wanted to annotate Antonio Morga's Successos de las Islas Filipinas, which was a first-hand chronicle of the early Spanish ventures into Asia, particularly of the Philippines. It was the first book about early Spanish colonization in the Philippines. It was written in the perspective, personal experience, observation, and documentation of a layman. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, if we go back, uh, we would see that uh, almost all the documentation of uh, pre-Hispanic Philippines, or we could also post uh, his uh, uh, but, uh um uh, okay most documentation were made by the spaniards both the pre-hispanic period and during the spanish era okay now um in fact the all this uh, authenticated date in philippine history based on spanish records was 1521 the time when magellan Okay, for now, Magallanes, a Portuguese uh, captain under the banner of Spain, fell to uh, Mactan chieftain Lapu-Lapu. Okay, however, with the discovery of the Laguna Copper Plate, it moved the uh, oldest date in Philippine history to 980. Okay, so anyway... um. Let's look at the next one. Okay, this is a this is a picture of Asosisos de las Islas Filipinas by Antonio de Morga. Okay, so um, <clears throat> now uh, Dr. Jose Rizal was granted permission to study and work on the British Library where he poured over Morga's work. He wrote expansive comments on several snippets in Morga's work, especially those containing Morga's uh, misjudgments about the Philippines and the Filipinos. When we say annotation, that means there is an existing work and then you make commentaries on what the author had written. Okay? It's more like a review. Okay, uh, Of course, uh, from this point of view, let's... Uh, um, we, we we know that history or the, the writing of history is based on uh, primary materials and secondary materials. Okay, When you say primary materials, when Morga 
wrote this history, he was a witness to it. He was, it was a eyewitness. So that's primary. But once when you read a historical account of somebody else, that becomes a secondary uh, source. Okay. Now, uh, <clears throat> now, um, the Filipinos had their own culture before the Spaniards came. However, in terms of writing, of course, we have the by buying the in the Alabata, Al Alibata. However, uh, please take note that the Filipinos wrote on banana leaves using a pointed writing implement, uh, the sipol. Now, of course, if you use biodegradable material, so it's not going to stay for long. Of course, the, the writing technology of the Filipinos are not like other civilizations like the Sumerians who had uh, clay tablets or the Egyptians who wrote hieroglyphics in their pyramids or the Chinese who use paper to write their books. Okay, um, So much of Filipino writing was not preserved because of that, because of the materials used. Okay, Now, talking about the misjudgment, of course, uh, we, we should take note also that the Spaniards, they have uh, many of the Spaniards who came to the Philippines, they have a uh, they feel superior over the natives. In effect, they are synth, uh, ethnocentric. So when they write, they have their own biases. Like for example, um, some writers emphasize that the Filipinos were lazy. Actually, they're not. Okay. In fact, uh, even before the Spaniards came, they were really industrious people. Now, on the other hand, let's look at this. It was the Spaniards who introduced the siesta or the afternoon uh, nap to the Filipinos. Okay, So with this, after eating lunch, then you go to sleep. Okay, So uh, even up to this point in time, the siesta is being observed in Spain right now. In fact, um, they would have enough for several hours and uh, they will just, they would close shop and after they wake up in the late afternoon, they would open their shops and uh, continue to do so up to about 12 o'clock. Okay. So <clears throat> anyway, going back. So the Kahimiang project provided Dr. Rose Rizal's preface for his annotation of Sucesos de las Islas Filipinas. So um, this was a monumental work by Rizal because... Uh, try to imagine today we have a lot of conveniences of technology. We have Xerox copiers. Uh, we have, you know, uh, telephones that could take pictures. We have cameras, you know. Um, it's easy to copy and things like that. So at this point in time, we could only imagine how laborious this work had been for Rizal. Okay, so, okay, ladies and gentlemen, that ends the second segment. We'll continue.